everyone. You're in the kitchen with Margaret. Welcome. We are making something that is so delicious today in our quick cooker. That's Pampered Chef's pressure cooker, electric pressure cooker. And we're going to put together quick cooker Mediterranean chicken and rice bowls. Oh my gosh, these are so good, you guys. I cannot wait to share this with you. I certainly wish you were here sharing it with me in person, but I guess this is the next best thing. The first thing we need is a, um, a small onion, and I have half of a red onion left over. I thought it would be perfect for this. So I'm going to just chop it up with my food chopper. Oh my gosh, my, my Fitbit just told me I hit my 10,000 steps. I just got back from the gym, and so anyway, that's always fun when it does it before the light before daylight's over. I always love that. So we're going to um, chop it up with our food chopper. I've had a food chopper for years and years and years. It's one of my top selling items. It has been my whole business for over 16 years. It's always in my top five. You can get onions so tiny that if you have people who hate onions in your home, it makes them so small, they won't even know they're there. So you can either cut right in the cap and I often do this when I'm doing jalapenos or nuts or something that gets all over the place. Um, but most of the time I just chop right on my cutting board and cleanup is the best. Here, I'll show you before I get it started. You just take the collar off, pop this off. It all goes in the top rack of the dishwasher. It's got wings. Nothing's gonna get hidden behind for uh, any kind of science projects or anything kind of like thing like that. So I'm just gonna chop right on my cutting board now and see, the more you chop, the finer it gets. So those blades make their partial turn every time you press down. So you just go quick. Here, let me get that in the camera. There we go. Just like that. It gets real fine. Here, I'll chop it all up and then I'll show you up close. So the great thing about this electric pressure cooker is you can sear these veggies before you start the pressure cooking. Ah, there we go. I love the food chopper. I can get it done so quick. So think onions, nuts, anything that you need chopped up coarse or fine. You can mince things up super fine in this or just a couple times and keep it real coarse. And here's what I have. Some perfectly chopped up onions. This is the quick cooker. I've got it plugged in and now I'm gonna set it to sear. All of these controls down here are all of the automatic preset modes. So sear is actually the very first one and it's got everything you can imagine here, you guys. You can sear, slow cook, so you don't even need your slow cooker anymore. Steam, proof for proofing bread. It rises like what takes eight hours can be accomplished in just a couple hours. Really amazing. Um, you have a chicken poultry setting, beef, pork, seafood fish, soup and stock, desserts, soups, stews, chilies, beans, white rice, brown rice, whole grains, everything you can need, plus just custom settings too if you know what pressure and what amount of time you want. We're just setting it to sear and we're gonna press start. And it'll immediately start getting hot on the inner pot here. See, it's a stainless inner pot. This is a six quart pressure cooker and um, it'll hold easily um, like a big, a couple three pound um, pork shoulders, um, a very large chicken. It will hold, um, you know, any roast. I mean, lots of food. It holds lots of food. So we've got our butter in and we're gonna go ahead and put our onions in too. So quick cooker, oh my gosh. I swear this tool has changed my cooking. It's, it's so wonderful to be able to throw stuff in like a day like today where I just get home from the gym and I mean I love my slow cookers don't mind you know I even use this as my slow cooker now but and I love that but I don't always have my um, a game on early enough in the day to be able to do the slow cooker so this is just gonna saute up those onions and as soon as they're ready to add the garlic and the spinach I'll come back it's been about three minutes and our onions are sizzling up beautifully. So I'm gonna add a couple cloves of garlic. Now this is a super popular product and most of you have probably already seen it already. This is our garlic press. You can put a clove of garlic, peel and all, 
right inside there and it'll press right out. Let me do the first one right here in the pot. See, it just comes right out. I'll do one, the next one up closer to the camera, right onto the cutting board. And see, here's the peel left over. All the garlic out of it. Isn't that crazy? Another clove right in there. Okay, here, let's do, I'm just gonna do it right here and it'll go right onto the cutting board. See, press, crazy. And then I just use the end of my knife, the, the not sharp side, scrape that off. Now, if you don't have a grip that's very strong, you can put the clove of garlic into the microwave for eight seconds. That is like the magic number, eight seconds in the microwave and the clove of garlic will push right through the skin so easily. It's amazing how it works. So, I'm adding my garlic. Oh my gosh, this is smelling so good. I wish we had smell-o-vision. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm gonna add some salt, about a half a teaspoon there. And then, I'm gonna add about eight cups of spinach. And I've just measured this out in my batter bowl. I love these batter bowls. Do you guys have them? They come with a white lid that fits nice and tight on it. It's perfect for mixing batters, putting leftovers in it, um, measuring things. I, I, it is my all-purpose bowl. And I found the world's largest um, spinach leaf today in the bag. Is that so funny? I had to show you that. So all eight cups of this spinach is going right in. So this is going to cook and just wilt down a couple minutes and season our chicken in the meantime. So I have about a pound and a half of chicken breast here and I'm using our Greek rub. I love this rub. It's so fresh. It's so delicious. It makes a wonderful dip like to put um, half mayonnaise and half uh, sour cream and then put this in there and um, use it for veggie dip or chip dip or even like pita chips. Oh my gosh, that'd be so good. I haven't tried that. I use it for veggies most of the time. So I'm putting about a tablespoon of this rub. Now don't think our rubs have to be used as rubs, like to really rub on the meat. They can be used just as seasonings and they're fabulous. Okay, so the chicken is in the pot, the spinach has cooked down, and we're gonna cook our rice in a ceramic pot. So this rack is gonna go on top of the chicken. This ceramic pot is gonna have the rice in it right on uh, top of the chicken and it's all gonna cook together. And so the rice cooks in chicken broth. So I have to show you our can opener, which is amazing. It's one of my top sellers too. It works differently than any other can opener. It opens the can from the side like this. So there's no sharp edge. Most can openers go at a 90, uh, 45 degree angle, but this one goes right up against it at a 90 degree. You just start turning, it hooks right on, round and round and round you go. And as soon as it comes to the end, you feel it let up and you counterclockwise to take it off. Then this little trigger works these little pinchers. See that? And that's what you hook onto the side of the can and lift up. And so there's no sharp edge, no buildup on the outside of this. It's a wonderful can opener. So I need about a cup and a half, and I'm gonna use our Easy Read Measure Cups. In fact, I'll do it backwards. I don't think you can probably see this, but maybe you can. These are Easy Read. So you just look right down on it. Like I don't need to do this kind of business. I'm looking right there, and I'm just pouring it to a cup and a half. This will give it such great flavor. There's a cup and a half, and I'll freeze the rest of this for later, the little ice cube things. Okay, so I've got our rice. I rinsed it. The rice does better when you rinse it in this. And I've got a cup and a half of rice. Now, with the um, pressure cooker, no steam is escaping. So, you um, need just the same amount. Most rices are the same amount of liquid as to rice because there's no need to account for evaporation. Where when you cook it on the stovetop or in the microwave, you need uh, two two uh, cups of liquid to one cup of rice. This is an equal amount. And when you're rinsing, you can see some of the rice little spikes in here. This is our little, um, one of our mesh stainless colanders. But I'll tell you, it will rinse. You can rinse quinoa in here. You can rinse, it's so fine. It will rinse pretty much anything without losing it through the little spikes. 
couple little pieces of rice still left. But this is great, especially if you rinse rice or rinse quinoa, you would love it. Here we go, I'm pouring the broth in. And then I have a silicone lid that works perfectly for steaming the rice. And so it's gonna go right on top. And this is an accessory you can get for the quick cooker. I just kind of finagle it around it. This rack comes off of it, but I find it goes, it's easier if you put the lid on with the rack on, and then you don't have to try and get the rack on once the lid, see? And this will allow me to lower it in and out of the quick cooker. So, let me show you. Seasoned chicken right on top of the spinach. I'm gonna go ahead and put this rack right on top of that. And this rack will fit with a nice chuck roast in there if you're doing potatoes in the um, in the ceramic pot. It's amazing. So this guy now is just gonna go right in here. There we go. And I'm gonna put the lid on. And I need to check and see what the setting is for this because I can't remember off the top of my head. Now you gotta make sure that the vent is closed and the lid is on and they're very safe it's shocking how wonderfully safe uh, this is there was years um, over a year of um, research that went into this to get the best of the best it's just so great and it's a great tool to get um, with as a host because you can get it for half off it's a great deal um, so I need to I'm gonna do the chicken poultry setting and adjust the time to nine minutes. So chicken poultry setting is on the knob here. I'm gonna go right over to here, the chicken poultry setting, which is a 15 minute, but I'm gonna go time and then minus to nine minutes and press start. Now, this will take about 10 minutes to come up to pressure. And what it will do is, um, just do this little kind of holding pattern of lights until it comes up to pressure. Then there's a little red button that will pop up here on the lid, and then the numbers will appear there. A nine will appear in this case, because we have it set for nine minutes, and it will start counting backwards. And when the little red button is up and the numbers are up, it is at full pressure, and the lid won't even allow you to open it. You, it doesn't budge, it's locked in place. And so, it takes about 10 minutes to come up to pressure, then it will cook for nine minutes, and then, um, it will be ready to go. We can either release the steam uh, naturally, I mean manually, where we push the button and it releases all of the pressure immediately, or we can let it have a natural release, release where it will just kind of release on its own gradually over a period of time. And we're gonna let it natu naturally release for 10 minutes, which is kind of a rice thing. It needs, to, it needs that extra time in there for the moisture to absorb into the rice and be fully cooked. So then we'll release the rest of the pressure. In the meantime, we're gonna make the veggies and the dressing that go on this delicious, delicious bowls. Be right back. Okay, our chicken and spinach and rice is cooking. Now, something I forgot to do when I turned off the camera just a moment ago was a quarter cup of water needed to go in the pot. And I realized it as soon as I saw the water sitting there that I'd already measured out. So I just stopped the, the process of cooking, opened the lid, poured in the water, in with the chicken, and then started it all over again. You must have liquid in the pressure cooker for things to cook. That's the key. Steam cooks. That's what's cooking it is the steam that builds with the, the liquid that's in there. So got to have that. I just wanted to make note of that. In case you try this at home, I want you to make sure you have plenty of liquid in there. So we're going to make our dressing now that goes on this. And it's wonderful. It's this delicious hummus recipe um, that you buy pre-made hummus. You could make your own if you wanted to, but you just um, take the hummus as the base and add some lemon and some uh, parsley. So easy ah! and so delicious. I swear anybody can do this. We're gonna use the manual food processor, you guys, which is my favorite go-to for making this kind of thing. Uh, you could chop an onion up in this just like you did the food chopper if you wanted to. You can make salsa, pesto, all kinds of things. It's a manual food processor and it chops and does all kinds of stuff like nobody's business. I've got some parsley here and I'm gonna just use our herb stripper to get the parsley leaves off the stem. I need a couple tablespoons or so. 
what I love about this recipe is it's just so fresh. The, the taste is so fresh. It's just delicious. And you can customize it to however you like. Like instead of the Mediterranean flavors, if you wanted to, you could make this have, you know, like um, uh, spicy flavors, you know, like maybe um, some Mexican or, or that kind of thing. You could make it be a Caribbean kind of flavoring if you wanted to. So I've got my, my, parsley in there I think that's enough and then I'm gonna just process the parsley first to start it getting chopped up here get that in there right or left-handed if you're right you just do this and if you're left you turn it this way and go that way or you can trade off okay let's put our that chopped it up pretty darn well so now Oh, it smells so fresh, oh my gosh. Okay, so here we go. I didn't talk about our knives um, yet, but we have some amazing knives. This is one of our um, most popular. This is called the five inch Sentoku knife, Sentoku knife. And um, it's a knife that I remember first from Rachel Ray. And um, this one is a five inch blade. I love it. I cut fruits and veggies up with it daily. Um, lifetime warranty, super sharp, forged German steel, really nice knife. So we just need the juice of a lemon. And here is the tool of choice for that. This is our citrus press, kind of like the garlic press, but for citrus, it'll strain the seeds right out of there through those holes. So I'm just gonna put half the lemon in, flat side down, and then press it right into the parsley. And then it'll practically completely invert it. See, and there's the seeds still stuck. You will get more juice from a lemon or lime or any citrus for that matter that is at room temperature so if you keep them in the refrigerator to keep them fresh you might uh if you don't remember to take them out in enough time for them to get to room temperature you can always put those in the microwave for just a few seconds 20 seconds at the most and let those get up to room temperature and then kind of roll it to break up the the um you know the pulp and stuff in there and you'll get twice as much juice than if you juiced it cold from the refrigerator so hummus is the main thing for this and i'm going to use our mini um measure all cup this is our one cup measure all cup the two cup is the original one from the day one of pampered chef used to be called the wonder cup of course until victoria's secret took that name and now we have the measure all cup and this is the one cup size or the mini we also have the petite which is a quarter cup and i love it for measuring tablespoons of mustard honey goopy things so this is perfect for goopy things that you would normally fill a measuring cup and then have to scrape them out but instead you measure and, and it also does liquids you can do liquids with the red side up do i have this backwards dry salt no it's the blue side up is the liquids and you can see right through here to measure your liquids for the solids or the goopy things it's the red side you measure, you put that to the base of where you wanna measure, and I need a half a cup, yep, of hummus. I'm gonna use some of this pre-made that I got at Trader Joe's. I bought the Mediterranean one, which I love, but I don't want any of the Mediterranean, I don't want the um, pine, pine nuts or peppers to go in this. I wanna to try to avoid those, because I wanna enjoy those with when I dip chips in there and stuff. So see, you, you fill it to the top, kind of flatten it out. I could take a little off of there. Put it back in there and then you're just going to plunge it see if i can get a good angle here plunge it into the bowl or the manual food processor and scrape that off see and scrape it off can you imagine for shortening peanut butter sour cream think all those kind of things so now i'm just going to blend our dressing together super super fresh and yummy now when you're using this, it'll come up onto the sides and the top and you just squeegee it down. And my favorite tool of choice to do that with is the um, petite or the mini mix and scraper. It's kind of spoon shaped. It's a silicone scraper. It's wonderful for cooking. You can use it on a hot stove or just in a bowl. Okay, here's our dressing. I think it's perfect. It's nice and smooth. We'll put that to the side. And then let me show you the veggies that are going in. I'll be right back. 
we're gonna add cucumber and tomato to this. We're gonna keep it super simple. But again, this recipe is so customizable. One time at a show, we didn't have a cucumber. We had zucchini. It was delicious with the zucchini. You could do whatever veggies you like. The key is that it's like one of those bootables where you have the cooked veggies in it, you have some raw veggies for the, for the crispness and the freshness, the rice in the bowl, the meat, delicious. So we're gonna do cucumber, and how I like to do cucumber is I like to uh, peel some of it, not all of it. So I just peel stripes on mine. This is how I prepare a cucumber for salad or whatever, to you know, snack on cucumber chips. On our veggie peeler, if you don't have a, a great veggie peeler, this one is the best, seriously the best. Veggie peeler, you'll never wanna buy another one and you'll never need to. And then we're just gonna cut off the ends here. And I'm gonna show you a nifty tool called the Quick Slice. One of my customers' very favorites. Here, is that gonna to be too big? No, I think we're gonna try it. Here, we'll go, well, no, we'll do thirds. That way we'll have plenty of room. So you cut your your veggie here into chunks. This is perfect for tomatoes, olives, mushrooms, eggs, strawberries, zucchini, yellow squash, cucumber, so many things, so many things. It's basically like a mandolin, but instead of a slicer, it is, it just cuts down. So you take your, your veggie or whatever, put it on there, and then it's kind of a rocking motion and you've sliced up all these cucumbers. Now I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna pick it up, take these off, and put them the other way now, because I wanna dice them up. Put them the opposite way now, so that I can cut them down, and end up with a bunch of pieces. And I'm gonna keep these in this small cool and serve tray. This is my favorite holding tank for fresh veggies. I make myself a little salad bar in one of these almost every week. And I'll put like cut up tomatoes or cucumbers on one side. I'll put some other kind of fresh veggie on the other side, maybe even zucchini or uh, cut up asparagus. or and, and it doesn't have to just be one veggie here. I can put something over here and something over here, put it around. In the center, I might put, um, you know, halved uh, grape tomatoes or I might put some olives or what have you. We're gonna put our dressing in the center of this one now. So what it is is it's a plastic container, nice lid, a compartmentalized part, and this part here is like blue ice and it goes in the freezer and freezes so that then you put it in the bottom here and so if I was gonna take a little fruit tray to um, with dip to a picnic or something or a veggie tray, it's gonna keep it cold for hours. Now we have a large one of these, you guys, where that white tray doubles as a deviled egg keeper. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Perfect for deviled eggs in the summer. And the tray is larger for bigger veggie trays or bigger salad bars. You can put all your taco toppings in this and have it completely ready for taco night and just you know serve right out of there and then i just put this right back in the fridge and it's ready to go so this is all going right into one side of this here here let me see i'm not showing you guys very good there we go and i'll just do the other half of the cucumber now pretty impressive put that out and then it goes right in the top rack of the dishwasher the, the manual food processor too, you guys, the bottom part and the blade go right in the dishwasher. The top part is hand wash only, but you just wipe it down and it's perfectly fine. See, look at all those beautiful cucumbers completely ready to go. Now I could do that with my, my uh, little grape tomatoes if I wanted to also, but I'll show you another tool for those. And it is called the close and cut. Now this is the one that I like to use for any small things uh, that you wanna cut them all in half grapes, olives, uh, grape or cherry tomatoes. It also works amazing for chicken breasts. So you can put a whole, that that was like, the, the when I first got this, I thought, what in the world do I even need this for? And then I realized you could butterfly chicken breasts with it because I'm telling you, sometimes you get those chicken breasts that are this thick, you know, and then they taper off at the end, the boneless, skinless kind, and you have dried out half the, the chicken by the time you get cooked through on the thick part. So if you slice them through here and slice them perfectly in half, they cook up beautifully three minutes per side and they're done. So this also does bagels. It has these spring-loaded 
plates. Oh, there's our quick cooker. So now it has to naturally release for 10 minutes. So we'll let it do its thing. It's just doing its thing. So I'm going to load this up. This would have been great when my kids were little when I cut a million grapes in half. Okay, so we there we go. We've loaded it up. I'm closing this. See, it'll accommodate whatever thickness I have, even those thick, thick chicken breasts. I'm going to take my knife. I like to use the gray um, bread knife for this one. These are wonderful knives, too. Now, these are not lifetime knives, but they are so sharp. They have a wonderful color coding on them. This one's gray. They are all different colors, yeah. depending on the style of knife. And they have a um, nice feel to them. They're perfect if you're looking for some cutlery for your camp trailer, if you're looking for um, just a really good knife or two. So we're going to close that. And I'm just going to slice right through. And it's going to cut all of those in half just like that. Can you believe that? Look at that. All of them in perfectly in half, just like that. And I'm going to put those now on the other side of my tray here. Look at that. Amazing, right? How fast is that? Can you imagine how long it would take you to sit in here and do this, you know, every single one separately? But what I really love it for, again, is the chicken breasts. I, it's so amazing how it just cuts chicken breasts right in half. I use a chef's knife for that, though. I don't use my bread knife. I use the bread knife for the bagel and for the tomatoes. Isn't this crazy? Look at that. All just perfectly in half. So I've got now my little bar, my little salad bar here, to top off these yummy bowls. And again, this will go right in the top. Now, when I use it just for tomatoes, I'll just rinse it off and it'll be done. But when I use it for chicken, I go right in the top rack of the dishwasher. For sure. I never mess with raw chicken. I hate it. Okay, here we go. And then our dressing is going to go right in the middle. And it's going to look beautiful. Even though, you know, it, and then that way, because we're not going to eat every, all of the all these bowls tonight. And so tomorrow when I go to pull it out for tomorrow, for lunch, I mean, I'll have everything right here in this little tray. Okay, here we are. We have two more minutes for the natural release to be done. Now the pressure's still on and it's gonna be on even when that 10 minute mark is really is uh, reached. And we'll I'll show you how you release the pressure after that. So how this works is when you press the start button when you first start it. It does that holding pattern until it comes up to pressure, then it hit, then it hits the number that you're cooking for. So if you had nine minutes on there, it shows a nine, and then it will start counting backwards. As soon as it gets to zero, it'll beep at you to say, hey, my cooking time is done. And then you have the option of releasing the pressure then and serving, or it will keep whatever you're cooking warm until you're ready to serve it. So it'll start counting numbers up. And so you know if the numbers are counting up that it is in a keep warm pattern and it's naturally releasing those first few minutes of that keep warm pattern. So if you needed to start a roast and then take the kids to a baseball game and then come back home, that roast would be keeping warm waiting for you till you got home from that baseball game. I love that about this. Can you imagine all the things you could make in this? Think about all the soups, stews, chilies, Boiled eggs are amazing in this. So many pasta dishes. Pasta is amazing in this. It makes a great mac and cheese. And any recipe for an Instapot will work for this. This is Pampers Chef's version of an Instapot. But let me show you kind of the main safety difference that I love about this. I, and I've never owned an Instapot, and I'm certainly not. I know I have friends who love, love, love theirs. So you can use all these recipes from Pampered Chef in those pots too. But here's what I love about this particular one is that I've heard before that when it's time to release the pressure um, that you have to, like there's a little lever up here on the instant pot that you kind of have to stand back and give it a push so that it, you know you don't burn yourself when you're letting it go. But with the Pampered Chef one, the button is right here and it just shoots right out. So it's quite a ways from your finger. See, the button I'm gonna push is right here and there's about four inches away the part where it's gonna shoot out. And so, and again, it's been naturally releasing so it's not gonna be a huge shoot, but I like to put it under. You don't wanna get your cabinets or anything with that yourself or whatever with that. So I usually put my vent on above the stove and I press that 
and it just goes right out the vent. And again, that wasn't a huge, because it naturally released. See, the pressure valve is down immediately. And let's get our chicken out. So you just then bring this back. And if you need to transport this while you're using it, it's got handles right at the bottom, which is really nice. So off comes the lid. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. That rice is in the top there, which is fabulous that it cooks all at once. I didn't even need to get a different pot out for the rice or a different pot out to sear any of it. Okay, I'm just gonna set this to the side right now. And then I've got the rack that was right over the chicken. I'm just gonna pull it out and put it over here. All of this will go in the dishwasher when we're done. And I'm gonna put the chicken right back in this batter bowl that I had used for the spinach. Oh my gosh. And the broth that this makes, you guys, you're not gonna wanna put a lot of the broth in your bowl but I save this broth and use it to, um, next time I'm gonna make a soup, or if I'm gonna make, um, I might even use it for, add it to rice. Now, I've got the chicken and the spinach in there, and I'm gonna take my salad choppers, which are these double-bladed scissors, and I'm gonna just chop it up right here in the bowl. It works amazingly. Look at that, it's just cutting it right up. The, the spinach, the chicken and all. I use these a lot for cutting up cooked chicken when I'm making enchiladas, tacos, adding chicken to pasta. Look at that. See, all cut up in no time at all. These salad choppers are amazing. These are also great for, of course, salad. Big lettuce in the bowl, you know, that isn't quite bite-sized. You can just right in the bowl, chop it right up. I like to use them backwards like this. It kind of looks like you would use them like this I prefer to put them backwards and then chop right in the bowl. So these two are lifetime warranty salad choppers. You can even put all the salsa ingredients in a bowl and then use it to make salsa. So it's crazy all the cool things you can do with that. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you how to assemble our bowl. Let's get our rice over here. Get my little microwave grips. These are perfect for getting things out of the microwave or getting lifting up little rocks like this. I'm gonna get this lid off. Be careful, because it's very hot. The steam will get you too. There's a little bit of water on top here. I'm just gonna let it fall in if it does, and if it doesn't, then I'm just gonna put it in the sink. Okay, here we go. Okay, oh my gosh, this looks delicious. The rice is perfect. It just cooked up here. Let me see if I can tilt it up for you to see it. I'll use the rack. Look at that rice. I used long grade bas basmati rice. Oh, so beautiful looking. Okay, so let's put our, I've got our whole little spread right here. Let's see if I can get a better picture for you. I could put my chicken in a nicer bowl if I had company, but this is definitely beautiful to serve just like that. That looks beautiful. Okay, let's get it put together. So here's what you do. You just take your bowl, add a little bit of rice, just put a little on the side. This is enough servings for six. And then I'm gonna use my tongs and get some of the chicken. Oh, that looks delicious. A Little bit more chicken. And then I'm going to get into my little mini salad bar here and add some cucumber, a bunch of the tomato. And then to top this off, you can sprinkle on some feta cheese if you like. I'm gonna do a little bit of this yummy dressing. Just drizzle it on. There we go. And then some feta. I'll sprinkle a little bit of that on. I don't want too much. There we go. And here's our bowl. Mediterranean chicken and rice bowls. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I sure enjoyed you. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.